You know, I was wondering what I was going to do tonight, but this calls for a celebration because not one package I was hoping for, but two packages I was hoping for came in the mail. One from the Boldport Club and one from, I think, Tindy is where I picked these up. So uh, let's uh, pop these open and we can see why, perhaps. I was so excited to see them in the mail. Oh my gosh. The uh, first one. Oh, hey. What the heck? The angry barking proximity detector. This is not this. This is a wrapper for this. The seven segment soldering project, three by seven. Now, when, when you buy something, there is something to be said about the, oh, I can't believe I'm about to say this, the unboxing experience, the, the experience that you first get greeted with as you're encountering something. And I have to say that without going overboard with the packaging, um, Sar and his team create a very lovely package for whatever they're doing. You know, it's not over the top. It's not got like fancy little magnetic clasps and doodahs and, and, and super slim fit boxes, but they're nicely fit boxes. They, they do the job just beautifully and they all fit as a theme, like the colors all match up. It's just such a well-crafted piece of, of kit. So as I've been led to believe from the other people who have been putting this together, what you get out of this is a, a seven segment display, except it is a discrete components seven segment display. So the LEDs are the square LEDs and they illuminate through the PCB where you've got um, uh, probably copper and silk screen on the top and uh, that provides uh, and then these LEDs shine through. Now we've also got <clears throat> so what you've got is a, a three segment LED, dis LED display, seven segment LED display, sorry what am I doing? So we're going to have some edge connector here that drives the seven segment display. So we'll have to figure out some sort of a draw. Oh, they offset the hole so that it stays in nicely. So yeah, that is going to um, be the business side. So this will mount above it, I think is what the canonical way of doing it is. However, I've seen some really, really super inventive um, oh, observe precautions for handling. I might have to get the static um, strap out and do something a bit careful because apparently these um, MOSFETs are very sensitive. So it will sense um, stray voltages on your hand um, and and trigger based on, on that. So, um, so pretty straightforward. We've got some current limiting resistors. We've got some LEDs. We've got some switching MOSFETs for managing the um, the inputs and uh, or sort of managing the LEDs based on the inputs and so yeah that is our first little project that came in the mail so a nice collection of componentry that will produce a beautiful seven segment display so then uh, three three digit seven segment display then the question is what do you hook this seven segment display up to what are you going to use um, this as the um, as the output UI for well you know it could be a clock it could be a stopwatch it could be a simple multimeter voltmeter display all kinds of things but uh, in any event uh, we've got a that to build so that's one thing the other thing that came was 
this little jobby. And let's see which way to come out. It opens this way. This is the SMD challenge. <laughs> um, so I got myself both the regular and the misery edition. Because who does not like to suffer with soldering surface mount components that you can barely see? I don't have a microscope. Like, I mean, that's the footprint there. Seriously? How on earth are you ever going to solder to that thing? Well, we'll find out. If it's even possible. With hand soldering techniques. And then you've got a little AT tiny microcontroller that we have to plop down on there, including um, a, uh, a land on the bottom and then a surface mount, uh, on, maybe JTAG, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> we'll see how that goes as well. Um, I've seen these around, I haven't tried one yet, so I thought I would get one to try it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Oh, and they give you a second chance on the uh, uh, 005? 0805s. No, that's the 0805s. 0001005s. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That'll be fun, too. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be up for it tonight because, well... I'm having the, uh, the celebration cocktail in in, uh, in acknowledgement of the arrival of a beautiful, beautiful kit from SAR. That's the agenda for tonight. Okay, so the first <clears throat> decision that you have to make is, is an aesthetic one. Not surprisingly, because aesthetics are almost as important with the SAR kits as they are as the electronics are. So you have two options. You can have a um, a white surround on your digits with a black border with a white border. Could look pretty cool. Or you could have the stealth mode all black, which um, ends, lends a bit of character to it. So all that means to me is that I'm going to have to order another one so that I can have both options. Not complaining, mind you. Just commenting. I think the I'll start with making the uh, the um, the black front option. The other thing, and it, it's meant to be put together in a sandwich using cordwood style construction. So something along these lines where the bottom board that goes here and um, these LEDs, as you can see, meant to go there. And so get the top board on top of that and whatnot. But what we have to, what I've seen some people do is and I love the aesthetic of it is have the leads curved so you'll have an effect like this where you've got a curved front you've got a curved curved leads and the front is on an angle so the board the display can be sitting sitting down somewhere and um chest timer to make a, a, a display for a chest timer or something like that you know and, and sorry I I digress um, so you've got a, a an angled display but it still allows for seeing all of the componentry inside and um, frankly I, I think that that's just a beautiful way of doing it somebody who I think was in winner up or won the macrofab design uh, com er, blinky competition with the uh, with the Jewel Thief batteries bouncy um, LED blinker, which I thought was brilliant. Um, uh, he he did um, that angled board view uh, construction. I thought that, thought it was gorgeous. I, I think I might try that. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to execute it as some um, as beautifully as they did, but we'll we'll see what it looks like from from the beginning and see if we can get something like that going. What goes into a seven segment display? <clears throat> well, 
to begin with. Let's see how am I going to do this? Let's just draw something crappy like this. Because, sure, why not? You have a switch that can allow power to light up each of these individual LEDs. So you have to figure out a way of turning all of these on and off. Now, these might be individual signal lines going off to some other device, but the idea is you've got seven current limited LEDs, a particular shape so that it can display numerals. So all of these are signal lines. These LEDs are probably going to be 5 volt LEDs or whatever voltage the LEDs are running at. And Bob's your uncle. You just send whichever signal you want um, <clears throat> to light up the individual LEDs. Okay, well that's all well and good. Except, what if you have to have multiple digits that you want to display? Each one of these LEDs is going to need <laughs> a... Uh, a collection of seven lines and then you've got a power uh, then you've got a ground as well so you've got n times seven plus one signal lines or seven plus one um, lines um, the n times seven is the number of signal lines so that gets unwieldy very quickly so what what have um, manufacturers decided to do try to do well Let's try and figure out a way that we can reduce the number of signal lines. If I could figure out a way of sending the decimal digit across a set of signal lines, I would be able to reduce the number of in unique symbols that I have to um, nine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sorry, ten. Ten unique symbols. And so that means I only need four signal lines now. Because that's that can be done in two to the four. So if I can do that, then I'm Bob's your uncle. And what you use in order to do that is something called binary coded decimals. Binary coded decimals decimal because counting from zero to nine which is the digits that we have to um, we have to display what is can be naively encoded using eight bits so zero is zero one is this is just super naive way of doing it. There are, other, there are variations on this. We'll get to that later. Okay, so here is the wiring diagram for the various digits in the LED from Boldport, or the kit from Boldport. What we've got is um, digit A, digit B, and digit C. They correspond to these three pins here in this header, which I've broken out, described over here. So that's A, B, and C are the three different digits. And then within each of those digits, you've got a segment. So segment A, segment B, segment C, segment D, segment E, segment F, segment G. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that's the exact segments, <clears throat> but let's take a look here. And how do they label them? That's segment C there. That's, yeah, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So around and then into the center. So I had that wrong. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right. So that's, so what you've got is a, um, an incoming signal on A, for instance, say you want to light up segment A. You've got to take A high, 
So if A is high, that means all three of these have um, a, a voltage potential between here and here, um, if this is grounded. So now what you need to do is you need to connect either C, B, or A to ground, depending on which, or some combination of them. If all of them are connected to ground, then all three of segment A will lit. But in turn, if you take each of these to ground, then each of these segment A's on each of, on, on the individual digits, A, B, C, I, I really wish you were using numbers. So segment one, two, three, one through seven and digit A, B, and C would have made it easier to describe. But anyways, here we are. So segment A on digit A would be, A has to be high, segment A has to be high, and digit A has to be grounded, and these are left floating so that there's nothing, no way of conducting, right? And then similarly, so you've got some signal that you're going to be feeding into this thing, some bit stream that is fed into all of this. And then what you're going to be doing is um, using that bit stream into all of these various lines to um, turn your display on and off. So how are you going to do that? Well, uh, that is what you need some software to do to write in order to drive this display. It turns out that somebody's written the software for the Arduino that will drive this display and um, we can, when time comes, we can go into the, the details of that software. But as, that's how this wires up. Now, these, um, that's all well and good, but what we have to do is we have to put some switching. I mean, bringing these high and low, these uh, each individual segment in the in the digits, giving these a potential is pretty easy. Um, all we're sending in is some um, some five five volt uh, square wave, or not square wave, but bit stream or um, a pattern of alternating on offs that will produce um, uh, light the various segments that we want. But this collection here is going to be at 5 volts, but you can't exactly um, leave these floating. There's no way if you connect these up to an Arduino, that pin is either going to be um, high or low. It's not going to be um, grounded or floating. So we need some way of switching each of these lines on and off depend in depending on what um, signal we want and what display we want to display. And the way we do that is by using those FETs. And those FETs are going to act, act as switches to um, turn on and off this connection here. All right. <clears throat> so these are the three MOSFETs that are hooked up to the signal lines A, B, and C. So when there is, and these are all 1K resistors to limit the amount of current that um, will these will source. So when there is a, a signal coming along line A, while well, this signal goes high, that we've got some voltage there, that means that the MOSFET will now start conducting. The resistance goes down to zero, and so now we've got this line going um, conducting, and so now we've got the ability to send a collection of bits along A, B, and C in order to switch the low side of our LEDs. So, oh, sorry, I didn't complete this diagram, did I? So that is what we've got in terms of a circuit. We've got, um, where are they on here? So one, two, three um, MOSFETs in these corners. A <laughs> question mark around these pins. Those are just there for decor decorative um, uses. Um, 
we've got our input header here and we've got our a b and c let's hold it this way we've got our digit a capital a capital b capital c and we've got our segments a b c d e f g on each of these and so now we just have to figure out how to put this thing together in an aesthetically pleasing manner let's get a little look at the back here that's a lovely silk screen <laughs> Lovely silk screen. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, digit, digit, digit. And then these, I believe, are just nubbin. Decorative. And I think some of the side ones aren't used either. We can use those for um, supports. So, yeah. Fairly straightforward. Um, and it requires a bit of software to drive, but it's a pretty circuit. Um, it's a very pretty circuit. So let's think of what we would have to do in order to... Okay, yeah, well, we still need um, seven signal lines. So we've got ten signal lines that we need to um, need to manage here. So we need ten pins to drive this thing. Um, so some efficiencies could be gained by putting a small microcontroller on here and using some sort of SPI... Um, or I squared C um, signal link to our micro uh, to a microcontroller, and then having that microcontroller um, break out. So use some sort of a microcontroller as a MUX to break out those ten signals to drive this display. So in in a in an actual project where you wanted to use this um, as a uh, as a method of um, showing three digits, um, my gut would be that. You, you you need something with a lot of pins. So some microcontroller that has um, uh, 10 GPIOs would be good. And then communicate with a SPI. There might actually be some chips on the market that um, do this sort of signaling, but I, uh, you would have to go look for them. And anyways, so yeah, that is, uh, that's just, uh, that's just it for now. So now it's time to try and figure out how we're supposed to construct this. And the, on the, um, on the bullport, um, website, um, they do give some hints on construction, where um, whereby you um, first of all solder on the FETs, and use those as a way of uh, as a um, as a spacer to um, space out your um, boards, and then you slip the LEDs in, and then you solder the LEDs onto the back, and then you can trim the LEDs flush. But um, I think I'm going to try and find a different way of doing that rather than soldering in the fats because those are um, delicate components. And, and I still haven't decided whether or not I'm going to try and do the curved display thing. But I might save that for another, another version. Anyways, yeah, so let's noodle around with that a bit. I really don't want to scratch the. Uh, I really don't want to scratch the uh, surface of the the, uh, the not the silk screen the solder mask on this thing at all because that would just that would just be sad, totally sad. But we do need to try and. Pull these through in terms of how much angle we can get on our board here. So thread that through and that through. <clears throat> and then that through like that. And that will give us a bit of an angle. About that much of an angle. That's not too bad. Got about 15 degrees of 
inclination. <clears throat> Will it give us enough space for that? fit in there yeah it will I've got these oriented backwards but that's fine because I'm gonna have my header coming out there um, so yeah the question is will I give enough space for the fat in this corner let's just pop a generic transistor in there and see what we get because it's the same package how I'm gonna do this without Destroying the fence through static is going to be a trick, that's for sure. Okay, yeah, so it'll just barely fit under there. I don't know if you can see that. There we go, that's a better view. I think it'll just barely fit under there. Uh, there are two values of resistors, 470K and um, 1K. Oh, sorry, 470 ohm. Um, yellow, purple, black, and black. Yeah. 4700 zero, tolerance. And then these should be red, black, black, black. Red, black, black. Sorry, red, black, black, red for 1K. So now we've got um, some resistors to place. Yeah, 1K, 470, 1K, 1K. So one of the suggestions that they make is making sure that you test your FET and your LEDs. So um, breadboarding this up. So um, the FETs are um, gate source drain, um, pins one, two, three, with the flat above. So gate source drain. Um, so connected to the drain is um, the load and then the source goes to ground and then the gate is what turns it on and off and this is the current limiting resistor and so when we apply five volts to our source we should see um, the uh, switch turn on and we do indeed so we can test all of our leds this way and then test all of our fets this way Now that we got them soldered in, um, I'm gonna hook up some uh, some Caesar jumpers onto them to make sure that I haven't fried them while soldering them in. They'll probably be fine, but let's just check anyways because the farther into this project we get, the less likely we're gonna be able to um, fix any um, failed components. Okay, uh, gate source drain, gate. Source. Okay. Now we need to thread some of these on. And it is 1K, 470, 1K, 1K, 470, 1K, 1K. Four seventy. I believe. Let me just check that. One K four seventy. One K one K four seventy. One K one K four seventy. Yes. And then we string this onto the uh, other side. And this is where you need to be dexterous. Okay. 
That's reasonably lined up. Oh, except for the rightmost one. That needs to be redone. Yeah, just feed those back down so that they come through the side holes. That spacer is just a couple of layers of cardboard. There. I think that meets the design requirement. From Blanche Derange. Nobody, nobody uses one syllable names anymore. You notice that? That came off the album, the two album set, entitled The Collected Vocal and Instrumental Works of. Okay. And that's how we end it. Thanks for hanging. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the calls. I'll catch you next week. Now. In the interim, stay tuned for Play Pigeon with the Wake and Bake Morning Show. This is <laughs> WFMU in East Orange, WMFU in Mount Hope. The clay pigeon. Okay, now we have to slip the LEDs in there. Red, yellow, red. Okay, this is going to be the tricky part. Is getting the alignment right and the angles right for slipping the LEDs in there. The, the ones that are oriented... Um, with the long axis of the rectangle parallel to the long axis of the board are probably going to be a little easier than putting the curves into the um, one the LEDs that have the long axis of the LED parallel to the short axis of the board. But um, uh, we'll just uh, do some, you know, because you can see that they sort of pop in and out of there. So we'll just maybe tack it in a bit and see if that's right. And then maybe move it around a bit. And then also I might want to tack this down as well. I was hoping to avoid any soldering on the top here because I like the sort of sewn look. It kind of gives it a nice a nice feel. But um, yeah, let's see what we got. Okay, so a um, little bit of um, Arduino code, and we've got um, a display that's counting up according to each digit. So, how how would you, um, in general, use this thing? I'll actually, show you what I'm actually writing down here. So yeah, you need um, you need three arrays. Um, and then an array of which digits are showing and then what's in the various digits. And then you can update your digit and then you can update which digits are in there and uh, that happens inside of your code. So that's one way of driving that display. And as long as you keep the pins high and low in that um, configuration, they will, they will stay the way you want them to. So you've got a loop through this array then that um, determines this. So you loop through your array. So loop for i equals zero to seven. This is going to be um, digit um, i, the value that's in this array. And this array is gonna be zeros or ones. A better way, now that's pretty wasteful, because all you're storing is zeros and ones here. The better way of doing that would be to use some sort of an encoder where you're storing a, um, a, an int or a character. And then you're just using um, some sort of a bit mask uh, on a, the first part of a number. So that's where that binary coded decimal thing comes in. You can use that binary coded decimal and a function that converts between um, BCD and the digits is another way of doing it. You know, 
<sighs> these bolt port kits are super instructive if you um, if you dig into them and 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 you end up with a beautiful piece of kit that is a joy to look at plus it teaches you really good um, techniques on well first of all construction let's leave the construction part aside but the basics of of digital control circuitry well, at least all of the ones that I've I've looked at, like the Monarch, definitely because of the um, of the binary counter that they had, or the uh, the um, shift register was it a shift register they used for that? Anyways, um, but yeah, it's just like you you learn so much. Anyways, I just love the level at which the uh, the kits are are put together. It's just wonderful. You have a beautiful piece of kit at the end of it, and you've got an interesting piece of um, uh, hardware to under understand how it all works. You know, I mean, it, it's not simply decorative, but the result is decorative, and the journey that you can take with that decorative piece of hardware in order to understand how electronics works is totally rewarding. So anyways, I just wanted to say, Sar, thank you very much for creating these um, little wonders of engineering. And I wish you well in whatever future direction you want to take the Bullport Club. And I am totally with you 100% on this journey because it, um, it is fascinating to be a part of. Anyways, I hope that wasn't too rambly and um, it was uh, valuable. And as always, thanks for watching. See you later.